Okay. Well, I was going to wait for Leon, but we have quite a lot to do today. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> we have a quite a bit to do today, so I'm just going to get started. I'm recording already, so we should be set. All right. So it seems like everyone read my note and spread out, so that's good. We're going to be working in three groups today. So you guys are species A, you guys are species B, and you guys are species C. But I'll tell you more about it later. Today I'm going to talk about ecological interactions. And we're going to investigate a quote. I would um, suggest the PowerPoint will be on Blackboard but, uh, Canvas. Um, but I would suggest to take notes for your own because some of the um, definitions that we're using today we're also going to use later in our experiment. So it's going to be helpful for you to know some of the definitions. Okay. The quote that we're going to investigate today is, all populations living together within a community, they will interact with each other and they will also interact with their environment in order to survive and have a balanced ecosystem. Okay, I'll repeat that one more time. All populations living together within a community interact with one another and with their environment in order to survive and maintain a balanced ecosystem. So this quote implies that each species has its own role in the ecosystem. And if you have new factors coming in, like human disturbance or invasive species, there's going to be an imbalance in this ecosystem, and it might actually leave, lead to a whole new ecosystem. So today we're going to do an experiment, and I'm going to need about 12 volunteers. So start thinking about coming up. The reward is M&Ms. So if you like M&Ms, come on up when I tell you to. Um, so first I'm going to go over what exactly are ecological interactions. I'm going to give you a couple of definitions. I'm assuming most of you will know these already, but if I'm going too fast, just raise your hand and um, I will explain it in a little bit more detail. So a couple of the examples of ecological interactions are predation and her herbivory, parasitism, competition, mutualism, and commensalism. And we'll go over that uh, later, what each means. There are competitive ones, which are predation, herbivory, parasitism, and mutualism. Oh, not mutualism, sorry, competition. And then there's a, I can't even pronounce this word, cooperative um, relationships such as mutualism and commensalism. Oh, should have pushed that button. So predation, herbivory, parasitism, competition, mutualism, and commensalism. So why exactly is this important? We talked um, in Dr. Wadeen's section, we talked a lot about population growth, um, population dynamics. Um, if you think about fecundity and mortality, so how many animals die or get born, that will change your overall population dynamics. And ecological interactions are no different. Um, they will affect the distribution in abundance. Um, so for instance, if you think about predators, um, if predators eat a lot of prey, that will um, decrease the overall prey distribution. Um, if they eat prey in open valleys where they're easy, easily spotted, uh, and they can't catch preys in, prey in like wooded areas, then that's going to affect the distribution as well because there aren't going to be a lot of prey in that open valley and they're going to be pushed back towards caves, caverns, forests, whatever. So these interactions are important and they will shape our populations. They will also affect evolution. I don't know if you've ever heard of the um, evolutionary arms, arms race. This is an example of it where you have a fruit fly and you have, what is it called, mustard plants, where they co-evolve around each other. Um, so 
the fruit fly will try to eat the mustard plant. It actually has its entire life cycle with the mustard plant, so it's, it lays eggs on the plant. The larvae will burrow inside of it and eat it from the inside out, and then they will hatch, and they will find mates. Like, everything has to do with the mustard plant, its entire life cycle. <laughs> So in the beginning, there was no problem. The flies were able to go to the mustard plant, but the mustard plant was, well, being eaten alive, basically. So it had to come up with a defense mechanism. So the plants that were able to survive turned out to have a thicker stem. So it was more difficult for the larvae to get through to the stem and start eating the plant from inside out. Then eventually, um, the ones that were able, the flies that were able to get through it were able to reproduce, and again, they were able to feast on the plants. And then these mustard plants, uh, they developed a, a kind of protein that these fruit flies can't um, digest. So when the fruit flies eat these plants, they won't be able to digest the food and they will eventually die. So a lot of those flies died off again. Uh, except for the ones that had a specific enzyme and they were able to cope and they were able to um, affect this protein, uh, were able to digest this protein. So you can see this is like an evolutionary arms race where one develops uh, a mechanism, the other one tops it, and then it like keeps battling to uh, see who is the better competitor in this case. Um, so you can see that the ecological interactions do really affect the distribution, the abundance, and the evolution. So I've been talking about predation a lot, so I'm just going to give you this one uh, already, where species one is going to be positively affected. In this case, it's going to be the predator. It's going to be positive. The prey is going to be negative. So for predation, herbivory, parasitism, and parasitoidism, it's an interaction that benefits one species and will harm the other species. And the difference between predation, parasitism, and parasitoidism is that um, predation, one benefits, the other gets killed. Parasitism, they live really on or in each other, so they're very closely related. And for parasitism, the host is not uh, going to die. And for parasitoidism, the host is going to die. So the picture that you see right there, I don't know if you can really see it. It might be too light. Do you want me to shut off the light to see it better, or are you good? Okay. That's a wasp that lays its eggs inside uh, caterpillars. I don't know which species. Um, and those eggs will develop and will eat the caterpillars from inside out, and eventually the caterpillar will die. So that's the case of parasitoidism. So let's move on to competition. As you can see in the picture, you have a dead zebra with a lion, with a hyena, and with vultures. So how do you think species A and species B are going to be um, affected? Is it going to be both positive, both negative, both neutral, one positive, one negative? What do you think? This one should be an easy one. Hmm? Mutual positive or negative or neutral? Neutral. Actually, it's going to be negative because you move on. Because species are competing over a limited resource, so both of their fitness are actually going to be um, negatively affected. So they won't have as much food as they would have had without the competition. So it's minus minus in this case. Okay? What about mutualism? Does anyone know what that means? <laughs> They're both positive. So in this case, you have a fish and a coral. So fish actually eat algae, and algae compete with coral. Um, so the less algae there is, the more room there is for coral to grow. But in the other way around, coral um, has like a hiding space for the fish. So the fish affect the coral positively, but the coral will also affect the fish positively. And then lastly, commensalism. Does anyone know what that is? 
There is a zero involved, but they're not both zero. One benefits and the other one yeah, so in this case, <laughs> you have egret and a cow. The cow, when it grazes, insects will pop up. They will try to escape. So it's easier for the egret to find insects to eat. So even though the cow doesn't really have a benefit, the egret will have a benefit. So it's going to be a positive and neutral. Okay, then I have a couple of um, definitions for you to know before we start our little experiment. So symbiosis is basically when two species live together. So it's going to be mutualism, where two species are positive, like the fish and a coral. Parasitism, for instance, uh, a tick and a dog, they will gonna, they're going to be living together for a substantial amount of time. And commensalism, for instance, the egret and the cow, they're going to be in close quarters with each other. So that's symbiosis. Then a specialist is an animal that will only eat a certain type of food. So if you think about a koala, um, or if you think about, um, let's think of another example, um, panda bears that will only eat um, bamboo. So they're very specialized in the kind of food they like and need. Then you have generalists that just eats any kind of food, like raccoons. They'll eat, um, they'll eat birds. They'll eat seeds. They'll eat, well, trash. Anything they can find, basically. Another example would be a cow, where they don't really differentiate what they eat, or a uh, pig. And then a niche. You should have heard of this before, but I'll give you a reminder just in case where it's the way of life for an organism. It's the role they have in an ecological community. So what does this mean? It means the time of day they're active, the type of, like if we're thinking about a bee, for instance, like the type of flowers it will eat, well, not eat, get nectar from, the temperature they will, they're able to survive, where it'll build its hive, what other species it interacts with, and how... Um, yeah, this is those other species it interacts with. So those are all the things that form the niche. Another way of thinking about it is all the biotic, so the living things, and the abiotic resources that each species uses. Are there any questions about that? Or? I know this part is a little boring, but we're going to the interesting part. Okay. So now we're going to do the ecological interactions activity. I need three volunteers from, well, one volunteer from species A, one volunteer from species B, and one volunteer from species C. Don't be shy, because more people will have to come up. It's not just you. Yeah. All right, one person from B. What's up? Mm -hmm. Look at the instructions on round one. And look at the instructions for round one. All right. So today we're going to. Um, each of you forms a different species in a certain community, and there's a limited source resource, um, which in this case is going to be the M&Ms. So let me change to. All right. So that's your limited resource. Who is species C? So I've never done this before, so bear with me. Try on there. We'll see how this goes. So at the back of your card, you have instructions. I also handed out a sheet uh, with instructions for round one that you can pass along so everyone knows what is going on. It's important that you don't show the other group your instructions. Okay? So it's just for you. <laughs> 
Okay. So if you read your instructions, I don't know if I hope it gets along here in the classroom. Each round you'll be able to grab an M&M &M, and we'll see how long it takes for you to gather the food you need to survive winter. So we'll see how long it takes and how long and how you interact with each other. And depending on what happens, you'll see if you're a mutualist, if you're uh, competitive with each other, if you're a parasite, and all those things. Um, so, there was a hand up that I gave. So, I would suggest we just work together. So, everyone can have a sheet like this. Combine the groups and fill out the sheet. If your hands are on there, you get into the bonus points, so you might want to stick together. I have one left, so if one needs more, then <laughs> we're Oh, yeah, you can all right. Everyone ready? <laughs> okay, so it's January, and I think we're going to start with species C. You can get whatever M&M &M you want. So take what you need. Just one. Just one. Just one. <laughs> then species B. So keep an eye and look at what M&M, &M, what color, and how many, and what they're doing. Because that's going to determine if they're a specialist, if they're a generalist, if they're competitive, et cetera, et cetera. So keep an eye on what's happening. All right, species A. Uh-oh. All right. Do it again. Keep going until you have your requirement. So obviously round one is a little bit easier. <laughs> it'll it'll get more difficult later. <laughs> okay. So now everyone has ha has the amount of M and M's they need to survive winter. So species C needed six yellow, species B needed six green, species A needed six green. Okay? So thank you. You can have your notes. <laughs> so write down uh, what we had here in the table. So number of M&Ms in the cups for species A, six green. Species B, six green. Species C, six yellow. And they all got enough food to survive winter. Did everyone feel that out? All right. Make sure your name ends up on a piece of paper somewhere. Okay, so the first question. Which two species occupied the same niche in this community? Was it species A and B, species B and C, species A and C, B and C? Which ones? A and B. All right. And how do you know that? Because they eat the same food. There you go. So looking at that, let me find the right sheets. 
You can go you you can go back as many people anyway. Okay. Missing some papers. There we go. Okay. So looking at that, which ecological relationship does species A and species B have? They're competing over the green food. How about species A and C? Nothing. How about B and C? Nothing. All right. Question three. Why will two species not be able to occupy the same niche in a community for very long? If you take a look, there's not a lot of green left, right? So what will happen over time? So do you think both of them will survive the winter? No. So it is a fact that not the same, a different species cannot occupy the same niche because one of them ha will have to change or both of them will die. Then, where you're, well, for group A, you only answer for um, species A, you will only answer for species B, and you will only answer for species C. So was your species a generalist or a specialist? So in this case, they were all specialists because they only went for one color, right? All right. I need three new volunteers. I need one from every group. Don't be shy. Your B. Interesting. All right, round two. Did everyone read round two instructions? I mean, it's not that important. You'll figure it out. But all right, so species C can begin once you've read your instructions. Yep. Okay. We're going to start with species A. So you can pick an M&M that you want. You went with red? Okay, species B. Which color did you go with? Orange? All right, species C. You have to pick for me. So I don't know if you noticed, but they stole from species A. Okay? All right, species A can go again. <laughs> You're going to have more minutes. <laughs> so you can stop when you've reached your amount to survive the winter.
right. So thank you for playing. You can grab the master and have a seat. So let's fill out. I need you guys to tell me what you had in your cups, by the way. Okay. So species A had four red M&Ms. Species B, uh, two of each. One of each. One green and one orange. Species C, two red, two orange, and green. Two red, two orange, one green, one blue. Okay. So let's answer the questions. Around two. Did species A have enough to survive the winter? No. Species B? No. Species C? Okay. So keep that in mind. What ecological relationship does species A and B have? None. How about A and C? Yes, can I hear it a little bit louder? There we go. <laughs> parasitism. How about B and C? Also parasitism. So then answer for only your species. Was it a generalist or a specialist? AKA how many colors did it eat? All right. On to round three. I need three more volunteers. Let's go. Okay. All right, need someone from group C, species C. Let's do it. We'll get extra eminence. Come on. Don't be shy. <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> You know, there's a round four, so I already decide group C. Here you go. So now it becomes a little bit more complicated. Does everyone know what they have to do? Oh, let's change it. There you go. Can you slide your cups a little bit closer so you can see it on the camera? Yeah, I tried, but can't. It's already maxed out. All right. Let's see. Species A, you can begin. <laughs> Picked up a blue. Species B. Picked up red, species C. Picked up orange, red, orange. Okay. Red, species A. Red, orange. Oh, they put blue in a species C. happening. <laughs> You're all givers. Or you just don't like those eminents. So keep in mind when you survive winter, when you have enough. 
you have enough? All right. Round three. What's the amount of M&Ms you have in your cup, species A? I have six. Okay. Six of which color? Two blue, two orange, and two red. Okay. Okay. Species B is the same. Species C? Same. Okay. So all, did all of you collect enough food to survive the winter? All right. So what ecological relationship do you think species A and species B have with each other? They're giving each other food. So they both benefit some mutualism. How about species A and C? Mutualism? How about B and C? So they're all mutualists. They're all helping each other out, and they're all getting something in return. All right, thank you. Finally, round four. Last, last chance to get three m &Ms. Oh, yeah. I need to be and I need to see. Hey, there we go. Species A. Species B. C. All right. So read your instructions. I think you might need it. So, species C can start. Oh, let me change it to the document cam. Can you put your cups closer so I can see? I think. Species A needs to push their cup over. There we go. So species C gave species A a red M&M. All right, species B. Species A. Taking an orange one. Uh, sure. Yeah. So they're always putting away red ones. Keep that in mind. Think you have enough to see what I want to do? Okay. You're greedy. <laughs> Alright, so species A. How many of you have Four orange, four orange, and seven red. Four orange, seven red. Okay. Species B. You have nothing? Zero. One red. So species A, did you get enough food to survive winter? Yeah. Species <laughs> Species B? Species C? Alright. Okay. 
Which ecological relationship do species A and B have? Parasitism? No, not that one. Because one benefits, but the other doesn't have a negative impact. So what is that? There we go. How about species A and species C? Also peninsulism. How about species B and C? Did you notice that one would put a red one in their cup and the other one would have take the red one out and then put it in that one's cup? What were they doing? Competing. Because neither of them wanted the red one. All right. So fill out your sheet. Make sure your name is on there. Uh, if your name is on there, I will give you some bonus points just for being in class. We have um, these, they're not bonus, they're actually an assignment. So these are questions that make you think about what we just did today. So what happens if your environment suddenly changed and you only had a certain color of M&Ms? What interference do humans have? So try to think about that um, and answer these four questions, and I'll give you 10 points um, on this assignment. So it's a take-home assignment.